Hi, I'm James and welcome to my channel. I'm an English teacher. I teach English in SMA Negeri Satu Dimembe. It's a public school located in North Minahasa, North Sulawesi Province, Indonesia. In my experiences of teaching English, uh, some of my students have difficulties in forming questions, particularly in spoken English. Asking questions and giving answers are the basics of great conversation, not only in English, but in any language. But are you doing it correctly in English? As I told you before, many of my students, they can communicate, they can get the message across even without the correct structure, with order or intonation. But it makes for a very bumpy, awkward conversation because sometimes they can make mistakes in their structure which change their meaning completely. If people understand what you mean and you understand what they mean, then the, the messages are delivered successfully. So in this lesson, I want to help you improve the structure of your questions so the conversation will flow smoothly, clearly and automatically. And finally, you can start enjoying talking your ideas in English conversation. You know, uh, it's important to spend more time improving your questions and answer skills. That is very, very important. First up, let's review question structure in English. Now, the good news is that English questions are fairly consistent and easy to follow because they have a clear structure. So, uh, there are four main parts that you need to keep in mind, okay? The first part is question words. The number two is your auxiliary verbs or your helping verb. Mm, be, do, or have. It can also be a model auxiliary verb like can uh, or will or should. Remember a lesson about modal verbs. Thirdly, you need your subject. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, etc. And then your main verb, any verb you need. These are the four things that you need and you need them in that order every time. Okay, let's try some examples. Okay, ready? Question word, auxiliary verb, subject, main verb. What do you like about it? What do you like about it? Okay, next. Remember, question word, auxiliary, subject, main verb. How long have you been living there? How long have you been living there? Okay, so what about this type of questions? Do you live in England? Do you understand? Is she arriving yet? Mm, are they your friends? Mm, can you help me out here? Um, have you finished your homework? Ooh. <laughs> Perhaps you're going to think, oh, what are those? Ah. <laughs> In this question, we don't have a question word, but we do have uh, all of the other parts of the English question structure. We don't have the question, but we do have the auxiliary verb do, the subject you and the main verb live. For example, do you live in England? Do you live in England? Do is the auxiliary verb, you is the subject, live is the main verb. It is as simple as that, every time. You know, when I was in junior high, my teacher taught us uh, that kind of question is called yes, no question. Because the answer of that type of question is always yes or no. I think it, that it's right. What do you think? Okay, this type of questions is perfectly acceptable. You don't need to have a question word. There are two types of questions in English. The first is uh, closed questions. The questions which starts with an auxiliary verb or yes, no questions because the answer uh, is always yes or no. And secondly, open questions. Questions which start with the question word or question phrase. 
Uh, now, let's review the closed question. Questions that start with an auxiliary verb or a helping verb are closed questions because they require just a simple answer, yes or no. The detail is not really important. For example, do you like the soup? No, I don't. Can you help me for a minute? Yeah, I can. Have you been to Italy? No, I haven't. Are you enjoying the movie? Yes, I am. Another good tip here is uh, the connection between the question and the answer. See how the answer directly responds to the information in the question. Are you? Yeah, I am. No, I'm not. Have you? No, I haven't. Yeah, I have. Now, what about open questions? Open questions are questions that start with the question word and they are questions that require more information in the answer. For example, When did you go? I went last year. How long did you stay there? I stayed there for three months. Why did you go there? I went to study and learn Italian. Okay, okay I'm going to repeat that for you. When did you go? I went last year. How long did you stay there? I stayed there for three months. Why did you go there? I went to study and learn Italian. Um, a good rule of thumb is that closed questions are great for confirming information about people. For example, do you live there? This is a closed question. Once you confirm the answer, then you can use open questions to learn more about them, their experiences, uh, their opinions, their recommendations. How long does it take to drive there? What's the best restaurant to try? What's the weather like at this time of year? What's the best thing about living there? Again, let me show you that the question structure always stays the same. Question word, auxiliary, subject, main verb. Now, what's the difference between open and closed questions? The most obvious difference between open and closed questions is the question word. We certainly need question word in open question because it requires more information from us. But in closed questions, we do not need any question word. But there is another noticeable difference and that's intonation. You know, intonation is the way that your voice uh, rises and falls when we speak. The intonation of your question depends on the type of question that is. For closed questions, you know, questions with auxiliary verbs, yes, no questions, your intonation goes up at the end. For example, do you like them? Are you hungry? Is she your girlfriend? Does your mother know you are here? Should I go now? Can I help you? Open questions that require more information in the answers usually go down in intonation. Okay, for example, why do you like them? What do you want to eat? What's your name? Where's my book? How long have you been standing there? Okay, an important thing to think about all the time, especially when you are trying to use questions correctly, is making sure that your subject and your auxiliary verb match. When you're using an auxiliary verb in English questions and in regular sentences too, your main verb stays in the infinitive form. You know, the basic form, okay? And your auxiliary verb needs to change depending on the subject and also the tense. Okay, this is very important. But when we are talking about tenses, sometimes we think, wow, this is a boring thing. But this is very important to in, uh, in order to make uh, your conversation flow. For example, um, do you live in London? Look, the auxiliary verb matches the subject. Okay, do you live in London? Do and you and live okay if your subject changes to he then we need to change our auxiliary verb to match it okay for example like this does he live in London 
have they tried it has she tried it uh, where was he living before where were they living before see the relationship between the auxiliary verb and the subject is one that you need to pay close attention to now i want to warn you okay in real conversation things get loose fast and sometimes grammatically incorrect okay uh, most native english speakers can be <laughs> a little bit lazy at times especially when they're speaking so you need to listen for key pieces of information this is very important i want to to say again to you you need to listen for key pieces of information plus intonation okay and try to just go with the flow one very common example of this is with uh, close questions ones that start with an auxiliary verb they can be shortened for example the question do you want to get something to eat can become want to get something to eat look the intonation is important here so that you know that it's question the intonation goes up because it's a closed question want to get something to eat want to go now understood like it you can add more example on your own if you want to well be sure to subscribe to this channel by hitting the red button there okay if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet so i hope to see you in the next lesson Bye for now.